Hey guys, Barry here with Epic, wishing you either a good morning, afternoon, or evening, wherever you are. In uh, today's video, we will be doing a full overview of the Mini Motors EY3 display and going through all the functions of it. The Mini Motors EY3 display is most commonly used with uh, the Dualtron scooters the full lineup since Mini Motors is actually the creator of the Dualtron scooters, but it's also commonly used with other scooters and popular brands such as the Cabo brand, uh, particularly for their top models like the Mantis and Wolf Warrior Pro. Anyways, let's uh, dig in and learn about every function of this uh, display. So I find this display to be quite simple and very user friendly. Uh, when you look at the display, there's only three buttons, which consist of the power button, the selection button, and the mode button. The general overview of the display has your total speedometer, so this is a live speedometer reading, as well as your gear selection, which goes, which you can cycle between uh, th one through three. So the higher your uh, gear, the higher speed your scooter or more power will be given to your scooter. Uh, to select it, you simply press the selection button. Very easy. Right, right below that, you'll see your uh, battery indicator, uh, which will show you your percentage or how much battery life you have left. This is represented by a visual, so a picture of a battery with uh, five notches. So the more notches, uh, the more full your battery is, similar to a phone, and as well as uh, an actual number. So here it shows you 63%. And right below the battery percentage, you have another four values that you can toggle between on the primary overview of the display. The one that we have here right now is your total voltage. The total voltage of uh, your displays also, also can be used to determine your battery life. Uh, we do have a 60 volt uh, scooter here. So a uh, full charge on a 60 volt scooter would be at, uh, at approximately 67 volts, where a dead scooter on a 60 volt would be approximately 54 volts. So you know that's uh, at 60 volts right now, we're somewhere, somewhere in the middle. Uh, to toggle to your next uh, overview here, where, what I mentioned, we have four overviews. You simply hit the mode button. This one is time. So this will tell you how long your scooter has actually been on since, since the last time it was off. So right now we've been running the scooter for about an hour and 16 minutes. The next one is your total trip. So your total current trip time and your Finally is your total odometer. So you can tell this is obviously a very fresh scooter, only with uh, 2.3 kilometers. So that's the main, pri oh, and this one, sorry, is the total charge times. This is the, another menu, C it stands for CHA, which shows how many times you actually charge your scooter from a completely dead state to a full state. So if you charge it, you know, when you just lost 10, 10%, 20% battery life and you decide to charge it, it will not count. It's only, it only counts it from, for, a, for a full entire charge of the scooter. Uh, so that's, that's everything there. Now to get into your advanced settings, all you gotta do is, uh, it's actually very simple, a lot easier than most displays. You don't, uh, most displays require a, a password or passcode. This display, all you gotta do is simply hold the mode button down for about two seconds. And then you have options between uh, P0 to P9, and then it gets into some letters, P, A, B, P, B, P, B, P, C, and P, D. So let's go through them one by one. So the first four settings in the advanced settings are usually set uh, to default settings for your scooter by the factory and should not be changed. We will go over it anyways, because you know sometimes uh, this, this display, the reason that you can change it is because the display is used on so many different scooters with different voltage systems, and you know it's, uh, it has the options, but it's, it's important to ensure that it is set to the correct settings. So let's take a look at this. So let's hold the advanced settings down. So P0, the first one at P0, this is your wheel diameter. And this can be changed anywhere from five inches to 26 inches. 26 inches would be a massive size scooter. 
Uh, we're using the Wolf Warrior X. I'm just holding this down to get through, to reset it, to get back up. A Wolf Warrior X does use a 10 inch tire. So we're gonna wanna get this to 10 inches. We're gonna get to five, okay. Uh, this, is important. this is an important setting because uh, what this does is it actually calculates the revolutions of your tires, which translates to your speedometer. So if this is off, your speedometer will be off. P1 is your voltage setting. Which can, be, which can be changed from 36 volts, 48 volts, 52 volts, 60 volts, and 72 volts. The Wolf Warrior X is a 60 volt system, so we're gonna wanna make sure you can see the battery climbing up as you, know, you have lower voltage because this is incorrect, but 60 volts is the correct setting for the Wolf Warrior X. The battery should uh, come back down to the correct level. So it gets out of the advanced settings pretty quickly. So uh, probably two seconds. Uh, so you're gonna wanna hold that mode button here. We got out again, so let's hold, the, let's hold that mode button again to get back in, so P1. Here's P2. P2 is your pole magnetics. Uh, so you don't wanna touch this, it's usually set to 15 by the factory, so let's leave it at 15. Oops, I gotta go back to 15. Let's do that. This you don't wanna mess it with. 15, okay. P3, P3 is your speed signal direction, also a default setting by the factory. You don't wanna to touch that. Uh, P4, this is your metric units. So this can be either in imperial or metric. So uh, one is gonna be miles per hour and zero is gonna be kilometers per hour. Since we're in Canada, we use kilometers per hour. So we're gonna leave this at one at kilometers per hour. Let's hit mode, hold mode again. P5, P5 is uh, z what enables or disables zero start. So zero start is uh, set at, when, you're, when, when the setting here is set to zero, it will enable your scooter to simply start from a zero start, which means you can simply touch the throttle and the scooter will go. Where one, is not disables the zero start, uh, and you'll have to actually rotate your motor wheel. So maybe kick kick your uh, kick your scooter a little bit for the throttle to be engaged. We actually highly recommend that you do keep it at uh, a non a non zero start. So to kick kick it uh, because uh, zero a zero start can can be dangerous. Let's say you leave your scooter, a high power scooter. Uh, on and you have somebody that doesn't know what they're doing, they simply tap that uh, throttle, it will, or even yourself, and it, it'll go, you know, possibly uh, hitting something or injuring somebody. So let's make sure P5 is set to one, which is gonna disable it. So the next setting is P6. P6 is your cruise control setting. Uh, cruise control can be enabled or disabled, zero, would mean that the cruise control is off, while one means that the cruise control is on. So what does cruise control do? Uh, essentially, it's cruise control. Uh, so if you have your uh, cruise control on, uh, what happens is when you hold the throttle down for about 10 seconds or so, uh, and you maintain a certain uh, level of power or speed, uh, it, will hold, it will hold it once you let go of your throttle. Uh, to disengage the cruise control, you can simply tap your uh, brake lever and it'll, it'll cut it out. Uh, cruise control, we, it, it's a nice feature because it allows you to, if you're, especially if you're going on a long trip uh, or a long uh, stretch of road, you can, uh, let, you can let go of that throttle and relax, relax your, uh, your hand just on the handle, on the grip. Uh, however, you gotta be mindful because um, you know, if you, once you do let go, sometimes you think your scooter is going to slow down. It won't slow down if your cruise control is on. So we recommend this setting once you're more accustomed and used to your, your scooter. At the beginning, I would probably recommend to keep cruise control off. So keep it at the setting zero, especially if you're going to give the scooter to somebody. Okay, the next setting, P7, is your acceleration speed. So this is used to increase or decrease the acceleration speed. Uh, and this can be set between zero and five. The lower the number in this case, 
the faster the scooter or more aggressive the scooter will be. So zero is going to be your most aggressive start, where five will be a, a slower uh, acceleration. So more gradual, more, more smooth, essentially. Uh, it'll still reach the same, uh, same speed, but again, just more gradually, where zero is just going to kick it or like rip it faster to that, uh, to that speed. Um, usually, we recommend to leave this somewhere in the middle, but again, if you're getting used to the scooter, you might, it's, it's fine just to start at five. Uh, I, I like it, I, I'm, used to, I'm very used to the scooter, so I usually keep it at zero, but uh, most people I, I've heard keep it at level two. So it's somewhere, somewhere in the middle. All right, next setting is P8, also an important setting. This is, uh, this will be, will go between uh, five to 100. And this is the percentage. This is actually your, you can assign how much motor power. So a 100 percentage will give you your full motor power. So this will decide what your actual, what your maximum speed is. So when it's set to 100, it's going to give you the maximum speed that the scooter is able to, to do. So if, again, if you wanted to slow, slow your scooter down, you can do this by uh, setting it to, you know, say 60 or 70. Or if you're giving, if you're lending it to somebody, you can, uh, and you're not comfortable with them using it, you can tame it down essentially, right? So um, anyway, I'm going to leave it. At, I'm going to leave it at 100. I like it at 100 because once I'm used to the scooter, and once you get used to it, you can control this with the throttle. So we'll go back to 100 here. Go slowly to make sure we don't overrun it. There we go. 100. All right, and the next setting is uh, P9, which is your motor torque, and it sets the amount of torque. So um, let's go back into that. So one will be 50%, two will be 75% torque, and three will be 100% maximum torque. It's uh, similar, I guess, to the acceleration speed. So the next setting in your advanced settings display is PA. PA is your electronic braking or regenerative braking system. So uh, this is a actually interesting uh, option because it gives you the ability to, to select electronic braking or to uh, turn it off. And it goes by uh, five different levels. I'm just scrolling through here so the display doesn't go backwards to the primary settings. So uh, when it's set to uh, zero, the electronic braking system is off. One will give you slight electronic braking, uh, and the higher you go, the more aggressive the electronic braking system will be. So five would be a very strong electronic braking system, and it is actually quite strong. So if you're uh, while you're getting used to it, again, we recommend to use it on uh, either level zero or maybe maybe one just to feel it a little bit. But they are very strong. Essentially, what's happening with electronic braking? is your motors, the controllers are telling your motors to go in reverse. So in addition to your hydraulic or mechanical you know, disc brake, whatever you're using, uh, electronic braking will give it an additional, an additional jolt of uh, stopping power. Uh, another thing to note is that it does use a regenerative system. So you know, it's, it's important to be mindful that when you're going uh, in a hilly area, particularly downhill, and your battery is fully charged, you don't want to um, hit that brake because it can, it can, you know, the voltage could increase too high. But luckily, most of these systems they do have, uh, a, you know, a, an overcharge kill switch, so you know that won't happen. But either way, it's important to be mindful of it. Uh, the next setting is PB. PB is simply your uh, display brightness level. This can be toggled between levels one through five, or actually zero through five, zero B display lights off, one is dim, two gets brighter, up to five, which is the brightest. Uh, let's go back to one here. Uh, PC is your uh, scooter auto turnoff time. So if you here right now, we have it set to 30. So this means if your scooter is on for 30 minutes, it, it, it will turn off after 30 minutes. You can, of course, set that to a lower number, uh, one minute, which is you know, obviously too, too slow. Usually, by default, it's set to five, I believe. 
but you can set it to whatever you want. So here we can leave it at uh, 10 minutes. So now at 10 minutes, the scooter will turn off. Uh, PD, the final, the final setting and advanced setting is your uh, electronic, uh, sorry, not electronic, but your AB, ABS anti-locking braking settings. So this feature, uh, a lot of times people uh, will contact us and say, hey, something's wrong with my scooter because when I hit the brakes, I get this duh, 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 kind of sound. That's what the ABS does and they think something's wrong with it, but it's actually, you know, it's a, actually a proper feature uh, from the, the, that's, that can be changed within your display. It's commonly good to be used, you know, when it, for snowy or icy areas. Uh, but if you find it annoying, you can simply turn it off by going to zero. One will have your ABS on and you could play with that. You could see what the, the difference will be when you, uh, as soon as you hit your brakes. Uh, so yeah, I mean, that pretty much uh, sums up everything for this uh, Mini Motors i3 display. So hope you guys enjoyed the video and learned everything there is to know about the Mini Motors EY3 display. If you have any questions or comments, please ask below. We will get back to you as soon as we can. If you enjoyed the content and this video, please don't forget to like and subscribe for more videos like this. Uh, until next time, we wish you an epic day or night. Peace.